What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about the performance that we found on the dyno and the flaws that we also found on the dyno from this old Vader Z06 here. Now, we put it up on the dyno a couple days ago to see where it was baseline. Not so much worried about the horsepower and torque numbers, those are good to have, but this is not a straight line race car. I'm not looking for peak power. What I'm looking for is reliability. So putting on a dyno gave us the opportunity to comb through the tune, make sure that it wasn't either running very lean or running too rich or vice versa, just fixed drivability concerns. I will say the last time this car was actually dyno was back in 2014, which is close to almost 10 years ago. And it still put out the same power that it did then. So consistency from this LS7 is there. 540 horsepower, 508 foot pounds of torque. It's a complete track monster. Way too much power for what I'm ready for. But that's besides the point. The one big flaw that we did find was consistently on every single pool that we did, we had smoke coming out the rear exhaust. Now, some smoke might be okay, but this was consistent bug killing smoke. Went, had discussions with the tuners. I've talked to a couple mechanics, spoke to some Facebook groups about what potentially can be. The first question they always ask is, does the car have a catch can? Now keep in mind, this car has been pretty much built by the previous owner, but one thing I do know is that it does have an elite engineering catch can, which is not a bad catch can by any means. The next thing they said was upgrade to a Mighty Mouse. Now upgrading to a Mighty Mouse at this point is going to be beneficial for the future, but not fix what's going on right now. With that being said, I still did order the Mighty Mouse and it is on the way, but the next layer of concern was if the car already had a catch can and there was no intake oil, then you would potentially have a valve seal or a valve seat failure or even worse, piston ring failure. Now I will say before we go all the way down that rabbit hole, I've already talked to a couple of mechanics who they have pretty much the process of elimination just kind of singled out that the fact that it's a highly unlikely that it's a piston ring failure because of the fact that the car only smokes on their wide open throttle, whereas a piston ring failure will be showing symptoms throughout the entire process the vehicle's running. Valve seals are much more common because on their throttle where the valves are moving, there's a higher likelihood that oil is seeping. Now, there is also other practices for that. They say that if the car idles at, you know, when you, on initial startup, if it smokes then and then stops smoking, that can mean the, you know, the expansion, the retraction of the valve seals can also mean that you're leaking through there. This car does not smoke unless on their wide open throttle. So I am gonna go down that leak down test and compression test, but for today, what I wanna do is, given that I don't have a long history with this car is I want to take a look at that catch can, take it, open it up, make sure that there's actually oil in there. And then I want to take off the intake and the throttle body and take a look inside the intake manifold. If the intake manifold is oily, it can mean a couple things. One, obviously the catch can is not functioning to par, maybe put a leveled up a bigger one like the Mighty Mouse, or potentially if the catch can was overflowing at one point and maybe caught a little bit later, I don't know. But if it is oiled, I'm gonna remove the intake manifold, go ahead and break clean it up, clean it out, and then reinstall it back on the car and see what happens then. Regardless of what happens then though, I will be doing a leak down test in a few days on this car. But I do wanna go through all the paces at this point. I do wanna clean out the manifold if there's oil. I do wanna do the leak down test and I do wanna confirm that this car is 100% happy putting down all 540 horsepower. So let's get started taking this apart, see what we find, and then in the next video, we'll go a little bit further, we'll go look at the, uh, the leak down test and see what we find there as well. Let's get started on this thing. So the throttle body's now off. Um, at first initial glance, just uh, basic wanting to maintain this thing. Definitely the throttle body can use some cleanup. Now I did peek in through just opening that valve a moment ago, but I haven't really looked inside the manifold yet. I'm gonna see where I can position my camera and see if we can get you guys some footage of what it looks like all up in there. And there we have it. We have a very, very oily intake. I'm not sure if the camera's capturing that, but the intake definitely has plenty 
of oil. Since I'm not sure that my video camera is actually capturing the actual uh, oil in the cylinders, I mean in the valve cover, sorry, in the intake manifold, I'm gonna go ahead and use my iPhone, but there you go. That's definitely oil. There's oil everywhere in that bad boy. Definitely gotta go ahead and take this thing off, clean her out, and then let the rest burn up with the car. Like I said, I'm still gonna do a leak down and a compression just for my sanity, but yeah. You can definitely see there's actually a little puddle right over in this corner, right over here, um, which is probably the culprit. So we already know that we got to go ahead and get this old girl off the car. That way I can go ahead and break clean the crap out of this thing, clean it all up. I want to do the throttle body as well. I'm not sure if it's coming out on camera, but it's pretty darn dirty as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff removed. Um, Basically, to get this removed, uh, I'm going to start with unplugging all the injector wires. I'm going to slowly unplug some of the PV PCV system that might be in the way, disconnect any electrical that I see to avoid whenever I start, you know, kind of tugging at this a little bit that I don't cause any damage. guys so what we're doing here is we've moved this old handy dandy sink over well not sink intake manifold over into my sink and I'm just going to use some um, brake cleaner to go ahead and spray down each one of those and then we'll kind of look at what the sink shows beneath it when we're done to kind of show you guys that's some of the oil now obviously it's been dripping out and uh, I didn't have an opportunity to quickly, quickly grab the camera but Yep, that's what's coming out of my manifold. So hopefully now she's going to be a lot cleaner and run a lot smoother. Some of that residue. Now that's already kind of drained some of it out. But that's some of it that you can see. And basically what I've done is just pretty much sprayed down every intake runner uh, with that brake cleaner to just try to clear out all the uh, sitting oil residue that we've had from the faulty catch can. So we're just kind of putting it back together. I've kind of... I've, sprayed it down with the brake fluid and now i'm basically putting the cover back on i mean not the brake fluid the brake cleaner i'm not going to go ahead and install it on the car just yet i am going to leave it just kind of facing down in the sink here overnight to allow it to just seep out any other loose debris or anything like that remaining uh, but i did want to have it kind of intact before i left it for the night and then tomorrow i'll come out in the morning and quickly install it back on the car quickly is a relative term um obviously installing things usually you run into certain complications um but hopefully this is a pretty smooth operation so it's the next day like we said we kind of let this old girl kind of sit overnight um, that way I was sure that it would be completely dry and, you know, just kind of taking a gander in there and also just kind of feeling my way through it without my gloves. It looks pretty good. And it's about ready to get put back on the car. It's about cleaned out and uh, hopefully she'll run a lot better. Hopefully we can keep the oil from getting back in there. Um, we can go from there. Let's start reassembling the car. went ahead and in reinstalled the intake manifold back on the car a real cool thing about the fast atlas x are intake manifolds that i wasn't aware of when i was kind of looking at how to clean it best is that it's a completely modular setup so you can actually take it apart in every single little piece um, to actually clean it out now i didn't go all the way to the extent of completely dismantling it but i did remove the top cover off 
to allow me to spray through the valleys, just kind of see where everything's going, give myself a little bit more space and wiggle room. It came out phenomenal. It looks brand spanking new. Uh, while I was at it, since I already had the throttle body off, I went ahead and cleaned that guy up as well. So that's nice and clean. Um, it was definitely a little bit gunky for a time. The intake filter does need to be either cleaned or replaced. Um, I'm probably just going to order a new one because it was a little banged up and then I'll maintain that one moving forward. But I did pre-start the car uh, just a few moments ago. Actually, yesterday, I apologize. And it started just fine and it seemed to idle, no issues. I was basically just looking for making sure since I had to remove the fuel rails that there wasn't any kind of leaks or anything like that. Everything checked out fine. No fuel leaks, no air leaks, nothing like that. I'll, I'll take it for a ride later on today. But thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm just having fun recording my journey to getting Vader the Z06 up in racetrack ready, which will be September 30th, which will be the first time that this car hits Sebring Raceway. I do have a good buddy coming into town today, a seasoned racer, to kind of give the car once over, uh, take it for a test ride, tell me what I would need on suspension-wise and stuff like that, and how I can improve it um, to get myself ready for that track. So keep on lookout for those videos as well. Peace.